In today's video, I gave my $500 4x4 Chinese buggy a complete makeover to the point where it's basically unrecognizable. And I guess you guys will have to stay tuned and find out if all this work will be worth it in the end if we have a proper solid ripper and a good platform for a whole bunch of power. Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by AG1. AG1 is a comprehensive and complete daily nutrition with 75 vitamins and minerals. So all you gotta do is take your travel packet, mix it in your cup, just add some water, shake it up real good, and you are ready to rip. So literally, it's that easy. AG1 makes it easy to take the right steps towards great health. AG1 supports your immune system, it supports your energy, and also promotes a healthy gut. And literally, after I started drinking AG1, I noticed my cravings for caffeine just aren't the same anymore. And you guys know, I'm a very busy person, and you probably are a very busy person. So AG1 is super easy, super convenient to take these steps to ensure a healthy lifestyle. And with the added magnesium, it's helped me recover from my workouts faster. But guys, take advantage of this offer. Go to drinkag1.com slash facilitybuilds or use the QR code on screen to get a free welcome kit. That's a canister, a shaker, a year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five extra travel packs. So guys, huge thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video, but let's go ahead and get back to the live action. Yeah, so I kind of want it up here and out here. I'm gonna run some more uh, cross bracing around here. And these bars are gonna be to widen the chassis and to give me a little bit more feet room, leg room, uh, to reach all the pedals and whatnot. Adding some more cross bracing to brace up the widest point on the chassis. Uh, I made it like this just to give you more space in the cabin. Alright, so we're going to lock this bar off. I kind of set it up this way to gain just a couple more inches of feet room. So we'll see if it's going to be worth it. It is really starting to take shape now. Now I'm welding my tabs onto the frame to run body panels. Now I did mock up a single piece of cardboard on the buggy and I do not like how it looked with just one big body panel so I'm gonna break it up into smaller body panels to hopefully make it look I guess a little bit more aggressive in total I'm pretty sure I have around 60 to 70 tabs welded on this buggy uh, after I finish it and each one of those tabs has nuts welded to the back of it so if you think about it that's a lot of welding now some of you might suggest a riv nut gun and riv nuts and I do have that I just uh, haven't really started implementing it in my builds.
and two days later, we got the sides braced up. This is gonna be one strong Chinese buggy. And see, I went ahead and welded my tabs up on both sides. We are gonna go ahead and cut out some aluminum panels for the sides. That's one panel down. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like 12 more panels to go. Yeah, this is, look, putting this much time into this platform, I don't know if it's gonna be worth it, guys. This is proving to be a very time consuming process, but I got this side paneled in. If I had a metal brake that was big enough, I would have done it in one piece, but otherwise I think it looks really sick. Definitely very unique. I'm going to use some stainless steel tapered hardware uh, to make it all flush. Now that we've beefed up the sides and the body, we got to beef up the roll cage. This is 1.5, 1.25, uh, 14 gauge. We're gonna step up to one and a half 11 gauge. The same stuff as this is. I'm gonna flare it out a couple more inches outwards and then I gotta cut off all this dash and redo it as well. to weld this thing in solid and who knows maybe this couple inches I widen the roll cage will go a long ways towards ensuring my safety and now I'm gonna install a quick release steering to help me get in and out of the buggy way faster kind of just grinded the shaft here because it was metric and the steering coupler was standard so just ground it down a little bit smaller and it did fit on and I welded it. Okay guys, I really like where that steering wheel is. So this is a quick release. I'm gonna go ahead and weld it in. This is the gas tank that I bought. It's five gallons and I'm gonna go ahead and mount it.
Okay, so I countersunk all the holes on the panels with this drill bit. I tell you what, it looks a lot better with these uh, fasteners in there instead of the, the hex bolts. So one thing about building chassis is you want to go ahead and align your tubes uh, to create nodes. This right here is a node. More than three tubing joining together at one spot creates a very strong point, rigid point in the chassis. And that's what I'm going to do with here. I'm going to cut this tube off and kind of re-bend it to where it nodes up to here. It'll also give me more clearance for the wheels. I got to snake it in between the pipes and it'll also be a place where I could mount the shock and to remove some of that horrible angle from the shock. Okay, so I went ahead and bent out a tube and I added these tube uh, disconnects. I like how this side looks a lot better than how this side looks. And you know, I added these quick disconnects here just in case I want to do an engine swap in the future or or make this back section removable or you know for I guess for ease of serviceability and also the this old bar the clearance from the tires was not really that good okay so I TIG welded this bar Okay, so I just pulled the rear control arm and it was on the verge of snapping in half. I mean, check this out. Yeah. I mean, granted I didn't weld it all the way, but still. I completely redid the rear suspension. I widened the, the mounts up and I also switched from rubber bushings to heim joints so we get less flexage. And these are just a whole lot easier to fab up control arms with. They're more forgiving. These axles have over 12 inches of travel. I'm going to redo the way the shock mounts to take advantage of these uh, UTV axles. They have a lot of plunge, a lot of travel. We are going to put the shock basically about here. And so that means we're going to have to get rid of these twin pipes. We're going to have to cut this off, relocate this. Alright guys, so that is the difference between this side and the original side. You can see all this work I'm doing just to correct this shock angle. The reason why I did it like that is because there just wasn't enough space. I mean the shocks were hitting that water pump. And then on this side, carburetors are in the way. So that's why I had to mount it at such an extreme angle. And so switching to heim joints, it's also going to eliminate a lot of that uh, bushing binding right there. Yeah, just gonna look a whole lot nicer, be a lot lighter and stronger. You know what all this work I might as well add a receiver hitch just in case it's also gonna help me tie into the suspension mount to make him stronger
right so i welded a nut on the end of a tube and this is what's going to catch the shock it is going to go in like that i'm going to weld it right there bolt's going to go into here we'll do the same on the other side and then we'll brace it Oh, and let's not forget to add snorkels. Uh, some of you did remind me on Instagram, so thank you. Guys, check this out. This was not planned. Wow, look at that guys. I don't even need to build a box because, well, I am gonna build a box. We, got, we can adjust the battery. So I added legs to my battery box. Now I do wanna give a huge shout out to Benchmark Abrasives. They have been my uh, flap disc and grinding wheel supplier since 2022 so for two years i've been using them they've been great and their ceramic flap discs last a pretty long time so guys i have a link in the description down below with my code make sure you check them out guys and save some money buy the abrasives in bulk hey guys now i want to get this thing all painted and it's not in my budget to get this thing powder coated and sandblasted uh, so i'm just gonna do it all myself wire wheel it and then bedline it the a arms will be red and everything else will be painted black bedliner um, so i'm gonna start with the front i'm gonna piece this unpiece this thing together weld it all up and then we'll get to bedlining it You can see we got this thing completely gutted. We're gonna cut the entire floor out. So starting from here to there, we're gonna replace it all with the aluminum diamond plate and redo the tunnel because the tunnel, like I can kind of move it by hand, 
and I'm gonna add some rungs like every 10 inches or so yeah it's just you know with how small the cockpit is I want to take that extra measure and ensure the safety of my passenger Guys, we took this buggy pretty far. You could see this whole thing started out yellow, and now this and that is the only thing yellow on this buggy. So, like, even though some of you might be quick to say, oh, this isn't a Chinese buggy anymore, this is a full custom side by side, but at the same time, I'm still stuck with the same restraints and the same restrictions that the Chinese buggy had, and those restrictions and restraints are size. Uh, this thing isn't as big as I'd like it to be, but that could be a good thing for the trails and for transport wise. And this is my diamond plate for the floor, 316 thick. I think it'll be perfect. Definitely a little bit lighter than the steel that I took off of it. And we're just going to make this removable, bolt it in. And we're going to place our drive shaft tunnel on top of it and finish the drive shaft tunnel later. So guys, I changed my mind on the bed liner and I want to paint it Nardo Gray. Unfortunately, Walmart does not carry Nardo Gray, so this was the closest thing to Nardo Gray. Alright guys, so Kami Moto sent me this really cool LED sound bar. It's 26 inches. It actually fits uh, perfect in between these two bars and uh, yeah I'm really excited to try it out now Kamimoto also sent me some tail whips and a turn signals lights kit see this thing just barely squeezes in now let's see if I can do this all by myself because usually you kind of need two people Right, there we go, nice and sturdy. And then the light bar is gonna go on top of here. And then super huge shout out to Oxbeam for sending me this 22 inch light bar and also pod lights, uh, which I'll be installing later. 
but man it is looking so nice dang that looks legit now guys i'm putting the panels on and it's looking really good now one tip of advice for you guys is if you're ever using aluminum body panels they're gonna rattle and vibrate like crazy basically everywhere where the steel touches aluminum you gotta use some foam weather stripping here this is eighth inch by one inch if you want to eliminate the rattle completely you're gonna have to run plastic panels you can also spray a very thick rubber coating on the aluminum sheets so you can see the foam actually absorbs a lot of that rattle so it's a lot better it's just so much work so much work goes into this guys three weeks of work kind of spoiling you guys with these longer videos because they're very hard to make well that's all I had time for in this episode we still gotta enclose the drive shaft tunnel uh, and close this front end uh, yeah we still got a whole lot of work to do I'm not sure what I think about the color I don't really like it I'm probably wishing I did the black bed liner instead but I already had two buggies that were black so I figured I want to try something different I gotta promise myself that this is the last time I mess with another Chinese buggy. From now on out, it'll be ground up frames from scratch, completely to my liking. Because, yeah, you just—it's just so much work. Just hope it's all reliable. So, guys, that being said, leave a like if you enjoyed. Consider checking out my uh, Patreon and my members page, and also consider checking out my merch to help support these builds. And uh, with that being said, guys, I'll catch you next episode. Stay tuned. Peace and God bless.